I'm Donna Babylon and I decorate with more splash than cash. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really adorable fabric cube. And this is a great accent to make uh, for kids rooms or uh, dorm rooms, even your living room. Uh, put your feet up on it, uh, use it as an extra table. It's a really useful little item. Now. I made this, but I could have bought it. Uh, but I didn't um, like what I saw, didn't like the colors. And when I make something, I always want to make it better than what I could do to buy it. So what I was concerned about was what if I did use it in a dorm room and all kinds of feet or hot chocolate was poured on it, how do you clean it? The other thing that I was worried about was what if you put your feet on it and it scooches across the floor? Well, I solved both of those problems. What I did is I made a basic cube, but I made this as a removable cover so you can throw it easily in the washing machine. The other thing I did to keep it from scooting across the floor is on the bottom, I used this gripper fabric. This gripper fabric is what's usually on the bottom of uh, bedroom slippers to keep it from sliding. Uh, and it does come in yardage and I used it for the uh, bottom of the of the uh, cube so it solved two of my problems now I'm going to show you how I did it I used this pre-cut foam and I liked it because it's really sturdy it's not real cushy and so it gave my cube a lot of body and I used four of them and when I put them together I just used a spray adhesive and I just uh, sprayed a light coating on and then just put them together it was really easy to do and this just acts as a basting uh, to keep all of the layers together then I made a muslin cover for it and that's where I put the gripper fabric on the on the bottom uh, and that will make sense as I show you the steps on how to make the actual uh, slip cover to go over it but that's the basic cube so then I measured it and uh, this is actually uh, turned out to be a little bit more uh, as a rectangle than a cube so I had to uh, take my measurements but don't you worry about it because all of these measurements are going to be on the website and so you don't have to figure it out but I'm just telling you what I did so you'll uh, if you have to change it you'll, you'll know what to do and I took all the measurements and noted it and then I cut the fabric and I cut the uh, uh, the, the lining and then also in between those layers I used what is called a needle punch batting and needle punch batting I like because you don't have to quilt it uh, in fact it said 10 inches apart um, I didn't do any quilting on mine and I, it stayed together really really nicely so this is a way of using your 45 inch goods uh, into home decorating fabrics because it doesn't they don't really have the body that decorator fabrics do but there's no reason you can't use them so this is the top and I even added a little decoration. I added a, a contrasting fabric to it. The, uh, the model that I showed you was a plain top, so you can have some fun with it. And I layered it with the, in, the, uh, the uh, needle punch. And then on the back, I put muslin. And I surged around all edges. And that just makes it really neat and tidy. OK, now let's talk about the body. What I did is I cut each side. Uh, from the uh, fabric and then I also cut my length of batting and muslin lining and you notice that's cut shorter and that's because of the hem allowance right here. Uh, I didn't want to have all of that bulk in the hem. And all of the measurements, don't, again, don't worry about all this because the measurements are on the website. I did the same thing where I surged around the edges and I just, like, a, like I said before, it just makes it nice and tidy. And then I started sewing them together. And when you sew them together, the, uh, the sides, you want to stitch across, but you want to make sure that you stop one half inch from the side seams. And I uh, uh, marked it and then I stitched across because that's going to be how we put in the top. So that's a very, very important step that it's measured or that it stops one half inch from the top. But now we get to the closure part. So these are the sides and we've got that made. But how did I make the closure? Well, the closure is actually two pieces of fabric and I used this uh, snap tape. And snap tape, it came uh, pre-cut lengths and it's really a uh, a nice, it, it, I didn't want to use Velcro because it gets icky, and this is a perfect, per perfect application for it. So in the uh, side pieces, if you can see this, 
I've allowed uh, a little bit extra fabric here that I'm going to fold over to clean up the edge. And this is where I'm going to put the snap tape. Now, when you are planning your snap tape and you're planning your closure, there's an upper layer and a lower area, a uh, area and you need to distinguish that before, before you put on the snap tape. And what I mean by that is this is going to lap over, overlap this area so that when it snaps up, it's going to come off easily. So then you need to assign the, the pieces to that. Now, one of them has a a little tip on it and one has the little receptacle area. I like to use the tip part for the overlap area and I like to use the receptacle area to this uh, side. Now also notice that when I'm doing this I would put the snap tape on the inside with the tips on the inside edge so that it comes over, and then the part with the receptacle on the underneath, I'm putting it on the top edge. That is a, a difference, but again, the instructions will uh, show you that clearly. So let me take it over to the machine, and I have it set up with a zipper foot, and basically, you fold the top edge under, and when you start this, you need to make sure that it's down far enough so you don't get it caught in any of the seam allowances that are up here. So I'm just going to put it under here, and it's just a straight stitch as we go down. Now, this, the uh, what you need to be uh, uh, aware of is as you're stitching this down, um, there, it depends on how wide your presser foot is. This one's a little wide. So you need to get it right on the edge and make sure that you, uh, the, uh, the, this part of the presser foot doesn't get caught up with the snap. And if it does, then you can maybe move the needle over a little bit more. So we're just going to sew really carefully right along the edge all the way down and just missed it and I'm sewing through all layers. Now I have it still attached. You don't have to do that, but I just, it's just uh, keeps it together and I'm not losing it and looking for it in my sewing room as I'm making my project. Cause you know, sometimes it just disappears just really, really quickly. You go all the way down and then also you don't want it to go into this um, hem area down here. So you need to determine, so I would basically, but uh, cut it off, I would fold the hem up and get an idea of where it's gonna be stitching across to determine where I'm gonna be stopping the tape. In this case, it looks like it comes right here here at the top so I would cut that off and then I would fold that end under as well and so that's how you apply um, the two edges of the uh, of the snap tape and then you do the other side but when you're doing the other side you have to also be very careful to match up the tape the receptacle area and the tip area you need to take this back and you need to make sure that it's exactly the same position or else your snaps aren't going to wind up so and that's why, and then I just take it over and test it. That's not quite it because it's not at the area. And I just move it down a bit so that when you are putting this together, it's going to snap together exactly. And that's how you use the snap tape. So now, theoretically, this side is already sewn to this. This would be sewn to this side. And if you would snap them together, you would have like an entire circle, which is what goes around your fabric cube. <clears throat> now to put the top in, um, this is where, when I emphasized that you needed to keep that, uh, that one half inch opening uh, open, this is where that comes into uh, to play. So with, you wanna put your right sides together and you wanna match up your edges as I'm doing here. And basically where I pull this down, I pull this out of the way and then I take this and I pin it and I'm going to pin from the top of that seam allowance all the way over to this seam allowance. And in that, I use these. Um, this is where I like to use these special uh, decorator pins. What I like about them is they're extra long. They slide like silk. And they're really, really strong. And when you're making home decorating projects that have balk to them, it really makes it, uh, it, makes it really, really nice to use. So I sew all the way across. I stop and then sew the second edge. So let's go back to the finished model. And you can see how I have it open. You can see how I made the cube, the lining exactly the same way with the top and a bottom. And I hope this gives you some ideas on making a, a quick and easy and colorful practical accessory for your home.